Closed wound drains are often placed during surgical procedures to continuously remove post-operative drainage from sites. One of the most common closed wound drains you will see at St. Mary Mercy Hospital is the Jackson Pratt, or JP drain. This video will explain and demonstrate the process of emptying and maintaining a JP drain in a patient. JP drains will need to be drained multiple times throughout the day. This can be done by either an RN or a PCT. In the process of emptying the drain, it will also need to be cleaned and the output charted. In order to do these things, supplies will need to be gathered. You will need clean gloves, a blue pad, alcohol prep pads, and a receptacle for the drainage. There are multiple options for this. These three are useful because they also provide a fast method of measuring the output. Small plastic med cups can hold and measure with varying increments up to 30 cc's of output. So if you have less than 30 cc's in the JP drain, this cup will give you the most accurate measurement of that fluid. A specimen collection cup can hold and measure with increments of 10 cc's up to a total of 80 cc's of fluid. And a graduated cylinder can hold up to 1,000 cc's, but it is in increments of 50 cc's. A full JP bulb can only hold at most approximately 100 cc's of fluid. The graduated cylinder will not give you accurate measurement at this level of drainage, so if you do use it, you will likely also need to transfer the fluid to a more accurate method of measuring. So choose the appropriate container for the amount of output that you are dealing with. A Jackson Pratt drain consists of a bulb connected to a drainage tube inserted into the body. They are often used after abdominal and breast surgeries to maintain drainage. The bulb is what supplies the suction to the operative site. When a JP drain is inserted, and after emptying the bulb, you will always compress the bulb and plug the port. This creates a vacuum in the bulb. This vacuum supplies negative pressure to the drainage system. The bulb will fight to expand so it can return to its original resting shape. That creates negative pressure, or pull, as the bulb tries to fill that vacuum. The only thing that can fill the bulb comes from the other end of the tube that rests in the patient's body. So it will pull anything it can from that space, and as new drainage accumulates, it will be pulled from the site and into the bulb in response to this negative pressure. If the bulb pulls enough drainage that it is able to return to its resting shape, there is no longer any negative pressure on the drainage system, and the fluid will continue to accumulate in the operative site. As the bulb fills, you will need to empty it periodically. This should be done at a minimum every four hours, but it can be done at any point that you find it necessary. If the patient is going to ambulate, the drain should be emptied so that its weight won't accidentally cause the tube to be pulled out of place. If the drain is more than half filled, empty the bulb. Anytime you're in the room, make a habit of checking the drain to see how full it actually is. If you notice the drain is almost fully expanded or is fully expanded, empty the bulb and compress it to continue providing negative pressure. The bulb is only effective if it is compressed, and the more it is filled, the less it is compressed. By regularly emptying and resetting the bulb, you are ensuring that it is always applying negative pressure and draining fluid from the operative site. When you are ready to drain the bulb, first, trace the line back to the patient. Some patients will have multiple drains, and you need to know what drain you are emptying to ensure accurate documentation when finished. Assess the site for any signs of infection. Begin by detaching the bulb from the patient's gown or clothing. It should be safety pinned in place. Next, you will need to milk the tubing. This means squeezing the tubing to push fluid toward the bulb. You will also be cleaning the tubing while you perform this step. Take one of the alcohol prep pads. With one hand, secure the base of the JP drainage tube in place. As previously stated, it is likely only held in by a couple of sutures, and you do not want to risk pulling it out of place during this step so it is very important that you firmly hold it in place while you milk the tube. With your other hand, take the alcohol prep pad and wrap it around the tube. Squeeze the tubing and pull away from the patient, sliding your fingers and the alcohol pad down the tube as you squeeze. You will push fluid that is sitting in the tube toward the bulb. You should do this multiple times, but there will likely still be fluid in the tube, and that's okay. The ultimate purpose of this step is to ensure that nothing in the drainage is able to clog the tube. Now it's time to drain the bulb. Release the spout. It is located near the drainage tube. The bulb will fully expand when the spout is open. There is now a direct and open path for bacteria to move into the patient's surgical site, so it is very important that you maintain a septic technique to minimize this risk. Do not touch the inside of the plug or the spout opening with anything, including your gloved hand or the collection container. Invert the bulb with the spout over your chosen container. Squeeze the bulb multiple times until it is emptied of fluid. A one-way valve in the bulb prevents fluid from re-entering the tubing. Using an alcohol prep pad, clean the port plug and opening. Compress the bulb and reinsert the plug. The bulb should remain in its compressed state. If it expands, first, 
double check that the port is completely plugged. If it still expands after being properly plugged, there is a leak in the system somewhere and this drain will no longer function and could pose a serious infection risk to the patient. It will need to be assessed by an appropriate clinician immediately. This should not be a common issue though. And with the bulb compressed and providing the negative pressure that it is supposed to, reattach the bulb to the patient's gown or clothing using the safety pin. Stick the pin through the loop that is attached to the bulb and pin that to the patient's clothing. Now you need to document what was done. Go to the LDA avatar and click on the appropriate drain. For nurses, you'll document site assessment. For nurses and PCTs, you will chart the drainage appearance that it is set to bulb suction and the amount of drainage, then accept. This will populate information in the flow sheets. And if we go to the INO flow sheet in the right lower quadrant drain, we can see the output we charted on the avatar. Over time, the color of the drainage should change. It should become lighter in color as the patient heals. It should also be yielding less drainage as the patient heals, so you should see the output trending down over time. If you ever notice a darkening of fluid or increase in total drainage output, contact the physician immediately. Proper emptying and maintenance of these drains is important. Remember to empty the drain at least every four hours and any time that it is at least half filled with drainage or whenever you think that it is appropriate. If these drains are maintained and emptied appropriately, you will see improvement and your patient should only require their use for a short time and then they will be removed.